Hi, it's Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV, and we are in the beautiful studio of the Fountainhead Network tonight. And also I wanted to thank our sponsor, Telus Optic TV. Today our guest is Jen Fontaine with Jen Fontaine Photography, and we're gonna talk about something a little more in depth and serious than just photos. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yes, I, it's been a while that I've wanted to um, to interview you because you and I uh, met some time ago in, in a very new sort of adventure of yours in uh, photography. And um, I think that basically the things that you were doing for women at that time was fabulous, you know, putting women that wanted to be, you know, maybe they didn't want to be in front of the camera, but you were able to showcase their magic in so many ways through, through the lens. Thank you. You're welcome. But you and I got together a couple of times and you shared a little bit about your story with mm -hmm. me and I don't have the full story so today <laughs> gives us that opportunity to maybe just let the audience know some of the things that you've been through and and if you know share as much as you want and or you can. So before you got into photography mm -hmm. Um, because I know you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a photographer, you're very busy, you're young, there's a lot going on. <laughs> there is. Um, so, so before you got into photography, mm -hmm. and, and I do want to bring up your brother as well, if, if, if that's okay with you, mm -hmm. um, what was your life like? Um, before photography, uh, it was, well, I, I am fairly young. I was a very young mom, mm -hmm. and uh, as I am very blessed to have my daughter, and but that was... It was challenging growing. I was definitely not, I wasn't ready. It was a surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a surprise, that was challenging. I was also in a more toxic, I guess, relationship with her dad and that was very difficult. And um, so my life wasn't always as put together as it seems now mm -hmm. and you know, as successful as it was now. And I had kind of a lot of hardships um, before that. So, uh, I guess in regards, well, I had, uh, um, so I did struggle with addiction and that was something that I struggled with for almost all my life. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't even really realize it until, you know, you kind of come to a point where it is a big problem in your life and mm -hmm. um, you have to face it. And um, so that was kind of something that I really did struggle with. And I kind of since then went on my mm -hmm kind of own self-love journey and was able to really kind of, I've been in recovery now for five years and mm -hmm. that's kind of been super life-changing and mm -hmm. a big motivator for me to kind of pursue all things that make me happy. And you know, that is my big whole reason for living is just finding as much happiness and love as I can. And mm -hmm. I put that so much into my work and that just gives me so much happiness and love as well. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And so were there times in your life where you hit rock bottom and mm -hmm. what, what was that like for you? Um, yeah, so there, it, it was, it was really, really hard and heartbreaking. And I, you know, I guess rock bottom to me isn't it, you know, everyone's rock bottom is very different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my rock bottom was really, I didn't like who I was. You know, I hated myself. You know, I didn't think that I was a good enough mom. I didn't think I was a good enough partner, a good enough friend. Um, you know, I didn't feel beautiful. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like I could accomplish anything in life. So that was really my rock bottom was, you know, a lot of, I wasn't very, you know, I didn't have a lot of self-worth. Um, and you know, that was something that I'm super passionate about now and was mm -hmm. that I really, really passionate about with my clients as well is because I think that is really, that translates in all areas of your life, right? In your relationships, mm -hmm. your work with your children mm -hmm. and, you know, loving yourself, I think is so important. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, my rock bottom was just, I hated who I was and mm -hmm. it was a big um, process to kind of gain back all that confidence and self-love and, um, it's completely different from what it, where I was five years ago, but it's been it's been a journey. <laughs> yes, yeah. no, absolutely. And you're so young, and you've come out of it, and it's great. And I don't. It's not something I want to, you know, just like always bring you back to the past. But you know, that must have taken a lot for you to get out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, tell us what the addiction was like for you. I mean, mm -hmm. were you like absent in your in your relationship? And like you said, these things sort of went on and on. Mm -hmm. You weren't a great mother. You weren't this. You weren't that. Could you give us some examples of that? Well, for me, it was choosing alcohol above everything else, mm -hmm. um, above relationships, above my daughter, which was the most heartbreaking thing and which was something that a huge motivator for me to be able to get sober and get mm -hmm. clean and um, putting alcohol above, you know, my family and obviously my job and, um, 
you know, I've always, I've, I've always wanted to do photography and that was something I was really passionate about mm -hmm. and because obviously I was in addiction, I wasn't in a position to even focus on that and I had to exactly. put a lot of my dreams and on the back burner because I had, didn't, I couldn't even cope. <laughs> yeah, you were drinking. Yeah, exactly. You were drinking, you yeah. couldn't cope, that was your escape. Exactly. You know, you don't yeah. want to deal with life, mm -hmm. you know, and um, who was your biggest supporter during this time? My biggest, well, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> well, better you than me, because you I always know, make me emotional every time. Yes, and flick your yeah, hair back for yeah. us. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. um, my biggest supporter was my brother. Um, he, uh, especially in recovery, so he uh, was in recovery before I was, mm -hmm. um, and he really showed me that it was possible that you could be happy and um, you didn't need to drink you could find different ways to deal with your feelings and your feelings aren't that scary um, and that you can move past this you can get out of this you can um, do so much more with your life and that was what he really showed me and he was in recovery before me so you know he helped me you know basically come back to life and um, I really owe my entire life now for him because mm -hmm. if it wasn't for him I don't know where I would be now. Right, and how many years apart are you? How close are you guys in age? Um, so he is about three years, he was about three years younger than me. Okay, mm -hmm. and he said to you, Jen, you can do this. Look at me, I'm in recovery. Mm -hmm. You too can recover. Yeah. And then what happened? Um, and then, so we were, we got into recovery. He was in recovery, I was in recovery. Um, I went to a local treatment center and he was the one who suggested for me to go to treatment mm -hmm. and because um, it really just helps give you that separation from that life that you're living now and takes time for yourself and that's what he did and he was able to you know get his life back and um, but you know addiction is really hard and it kind of comes back and it's a constant struggle that you have to work with and mm -hmm. live with and um, you know unfortunately two months after I got clean he uh, passed away from a drug overdose. He passed mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things, yeah. you know, um, especially for your mom. Mm -hmm. She's one of your biggest supporters. Yeah. You have a good relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me about that journey that, that basically happened when you learned about his passing. Mm -hmm. it, was, um, uh, it was the most difficult thing I probably have, have ever gone through. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was, I just stopped drinking. I was two months sober at this time. Uh, and it, it was a huge motivator for me to be able to stay clean and, you know, I really, you know, owe my, my sobriety to him mm -hmm. and I wanted to be able to, you know, live for him and, you know, I know that he's always with me every step of the way and, you know, he's, I am constantly talking to him every day when I pray to him, when I talk to him and that's, you know, these are, he's, he's the big reason why I am here today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there could have been a lot of things that you could have done different mm -hmm. after learning about his loss. Mm -hmm. A lot of people find that a reason to relapse. A lot of people would go back to the alcohol or whatever their addiction abuse is. Um, but, but you chose not to, mm -hmm. like you could have. Mm -hmm. But only two months sober, it's not a lot of time. But did, did you take the things that you learned at the treatment center and just like, were you white knuckling? Like, how, how did you do it? Because it's so mm -hmm. hard. Like, how did you not fall backwards? I think having a support system is the biggest thing that you, you can have. Mm -hmm. And um, I was only two months sober, but I did make amazing relationships with mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. in recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in a 12-step program. So, you know, I, I, I went to meetings and, you know, I really... Um, poured my, I, I didn't have anything at this point, but I poured my entire um, heart and soul into the community where I got clean. And I really just let them carry me through this time because I, you know, I had to be physically carried to meetings too. Yes, yes. Um, and if it wasn't for to that. To function, right? Yeah. To function. Mm -hmm. And um, if it wasn't for them and that support system, my mom, my friends that I met in the community, and I wouldn't have I, I probably would have relapsed because I think it's so important to have people that you can count on and mm -hmm. talk to and who understand mm -hmm. where you're, mm -hmm. you're at and mm -hmm. have been where you've been. And um, obviously going through a huge loss is super life changing, but it also brings people into your life that you never thought <clears throat> would be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and I think everyone comes into your life for a reason and I've met incredible people um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through my whole journey that mm -hmm. are very close friends to me today. Tell them just take a yeah. glass of water, we'll just take a quick moment. <clears throat> I will wipe my tear here. <clears throat> so this happens, you stay on the path, you're carrying on, you're determined to stay sober, you have your support system in place. Are you doing photography at this time or not really? No. No. No, I took about uh, two to three years. Um, I was doing photography more as a hobby, kind mm -hmm. of si a mm -hmm. side business mm -hmm. for a little bit. And it's something I really liked, but it wasn't something I could put my whole time and energy into. Um, when I got clean, I didn't focus on having my business back again. I was really taking baby steps and really learning just to live life again, happy. And that was mm -hmm. my biggest focus. Mm -hmm. And I got a job doing marketing and that was fine, but it obviously didn't really light me up. Yeah, and it didn't fulfill you. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. It didn't mm -hmm. light me up. And um, when I felt like I was ready to kind of take on that challenge again, it was uh, in 2020, right when COVID hit. <laughs> and that was another challenge mm -hmm. that I had to face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> you, you started again. Is this when you got your place in Port Coquitlam, would you say? Or did you work out of your home for a little while? I worked out of my home for a little while. Um, I did, uh, I was in New West for a little bit and I went to clients' homes and I um, I was still kind of doing this as a hobby to see if I really wanted to get back into it again. Mm -hmm. And when I made that decision, I com decided to completely just rebrand and you know give myself one year's time to make it work. And you know, if it didn't work, I'd reevaluate and, but it did and, it, and it's been, it was my first year in business was probably the best year of my entire, entire life. Your entire life, yeah. yes. That's when you, well, I wanted you to talk about the 40 over 40 project, mm -hmm. the first one. And then also, um, you know, I know that you and I, we, we talk offline basically, and I know you have a mentor and you have like mm -hmm. a business coach and talk about, again, a part of the support system, you yeah. know, maybe not with addiction, but now with your business. Yeah. And I also want to know if you still continue to go to meetings. Mm -hmm. Do you? Yes, I yes. do. Okay. Yeah. I know it's it, three questions all together. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, you still go to meetings. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a sponsor still? I do have a sponsor. Yes. Yeah, I have a sponsor. I still go to meetings. I don't go to meetings daily anymore. No, of but course. It, but of I, course. I, I, I still go to meetings. Um, now they're kind of on Zoom right now because of COVID. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I still go. Uh, it's still really important to, to me. And my husband's also in recovery. So mm -hmm. recovery is a big part of our lives. Right, and right. Um, it's something that we both value um as top of our values yes of course yeah. of um, course and then just circling <laughs> back to the 40 over 40 project yeah. so you're starting your business you're in new westminster things are going <clears throat> you're giving yourself 12 months and give it a go or you're going to just pack it all in right yeah so then you have an epiphany what what yeah. happens um so i i knew that this is something i wanted to do i've always been when i set my mind to something i accomplish it i don't have another backup option this is just what i want to do and again support systems are super huge to me and um so i hired a mentor and i invested a lot in education and uh, really figured out how to make <clears throat> my business work for me mm -hmm. um, which i think is super important you have a business and you want it to you know be able to help you accomplish all your dreams and goals and you know be able to create a business that really works around your life and spending time with your family and you know still being able to make money and you know doing all these things and so yeah i complete i really put my heart and soul into learning how to actually run a business and um i knew i had kind of my photography down but mm -hmm. i the business side of it is completely different, right? right of so, course, of course. Yeah, so I did put a lot of energy and, and money and time into learning and hiring people and uh, completely rebranded. And then I launched this 40 over 40 project. Um, and it has been the best thing that I ever did. And it was so fun. It's how we met. <laughs> yes, that is how we met. I was yep. in that project. Yes. yes, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm not 40 yet. But my biggest thing is I love um, empowering women because uh, learning how to love yourself obviously a portrait session isn't going to make you love yourself but it is a huge step and it can be a big um, step in that direction mm -hmm. and um, I've experienced it myself obviously I've been in front of the camera I've done photo shoots myself I have a huge mm -hmm. portrait well, of you, myself. You, you modeled right you yeah. used to be a model many years ago yeah yeah I that's right modeling. you have a giant size yeah. portrait <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh yes. I have a huge portrait of myself and it's just like a constant reminder that you know I am worthy of loving myself um, you know I 
I'm a badass, I am amazing, and like that's what I want my clients to feel. Mm -hmm. And um, so this project was super uh, all about that, all about empowering women, breaking the stigma around aging. Um, it's been not only, I think, empowering for the 40 women that it, aging is, is, is just a number, but also for people who are under 40, like me, that I'm just so inspired and mm. you know for me maybe like oh getting older I don't know but now seeing you guys and it's just I can't wait <laughs> I think it's amazing guys. whoa I'm on the older <laughs> side no 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 <laughs> that's okay I'm just giving you a hard time it's fine right so you decided to do this 40 over 40 and there's a charity that you mm -hmm. um that you love that you donate to do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah so we partnered last year with Dress for Success Vancouver so mm -hmm. they're also all about empowering women to get into the workforce they help with uh, donating professional clothes, with uh, mentors, and helping with interviews and all that stuff. And uh, so we donated to them last year. So $50 of this everyone's session fee went directly to them. Mm -hmm. And then we continue to raise money for them at the gala we had. And we were able to raise $4,000 last year. Right. And we're going to top it this year. Yes, I know you it. are. You're going to top it this year. Um, with regards to all of that, you're, you're restarting now. I call it 40 over 40 2.0 because yeah. the, the, the original cast has already been there. Yeah. So those 40 Maybe are done. And alumni. Now you're on to the, to the, new, uh, to the new 40. Um, but I just want to ask you if I, we could just go back to, to talk about grief for mm -hmm. one second. Uh, how do you deal with the grief every day? I know it's been a little longer for you. That's one thing that we have in common. I lost my brother as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming up on a year for me and I still struggle and you know my husband said it well um, you never you know you never get over it you mm -hmm. learn to live, live with it yeah. is what he shared with me and I thought that was so profound and it's very true mm -hmm. so some days I have a better days than others and some days I don't but I'm wondering like with yourself like you you know when, I, when you talk about your brother I mean outside of today like mm -hmm. you just speak very uh, casually, normally, like you're not, you're not getting all upset about the whole death thing or anything like that, mm -hmm. where for me, it's like sometimes I can't get the words out and I don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so how, how, how do you get through the grief? Um, I think there's different stages and, you know, it wasn't always easy to talk about him and I refused to talk about him for a very long time with anyone except for people who knew him mm -hmm. and because that felt familiar to me and of course um so i think i i really liked what you said is just really just learning to live with it and uh it does get easier um but i think it's it's really just about honoring them and being patient with yourself that was the biggest thing that I'm going to be fine a lot of days and then other days I'm going to cry and I won't be able to stop crying and I have to just give myself permission to do that mm -hmm. and give uh, and let people that I know that are closest to me know that I'm struggling with this right now and mm -hmm. I need space to do this or I need comfort and really just asking for I think what you you need in that time and learning and learning what you need and learning how to ask for it is probably the biggest thing um, that's helped me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. So is there anything that you would like our viewers to know more about you and what's going on? This is where we can <laughs> totally plug the Jen Fontaine photography, yes. you know? So um, I know that you just started your 40 over 40. We know about the charity that you've chosen. There's a gala at the end of all of this to celebrate all these women. I hope mm -hmm. that you invite alumni to that as well because I know a lot of the women that have done it already would love to, re to rejoin you mm -hmm. and a bigger celebration, of course, um, if COVID allows it. Mm -hmm. um, where are you at? I know you have a big goal for the month of uh, February slash March. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure what month it is, but but tell, tell our viewers, uh, let them know. Yeah, so we launched our 40 over 40 project last week. We're already, already a quarter of the way booked. I have a big goal. I want to be able to book it up by the beginning of March. So okay. that's a week and a half away. So yes, we got, yes. <clears throat> so we got a lot of bookings to do, but we have a big launch party that we've organized. So it's going to be on March 5th mm -hmm. at 11 a.m. over Zoom. Mm -hmm. And anyone over the age of 40 is obviously welcome to attend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have giveaways. I'm going to be giving away a 40 over 40 spot. Uh, Lindsay, my makeup artist, she's going to be giving away uh, some dermaplaning and some other services. We have a blowout in style getting give, given away. Uh, the executive director at Just for Success Vancouver is going to be there. She's going to be yeah. She's going to be talking about the charity. Good. Um, I'll obviously be going over all the details of the project and sharing photos and videos from last year's gala, and it'll just be a super fun event. So yes, and normally this is something <clears throat> that happens over a period of several months. Yeah. In terms of the 
the clients, the bookings, the photography, the, the portraits, all of that. So yeah. usually you like to wrap by August or something, right? Yeah, so yes. August is the end date. Yes. So uh, 40 it, women between now and yes, August. Yeah. Just because you don't get book in March doesn't mean you can't book in April. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. So I really want to thank you for um, being vulnerable with us and sharing your story. Um, I, I'm sure it wasn't just all of that. You can only cover so much in 30 minutes. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I appreciate um, you speaking from the heart. I know that your brother meant a lot to you. And um, I often will read your mother's uh, posts and things like that of how much uh, her son meant to her as well. Mm -hmm. So so thank you so much for sharing. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. We talked to Jen Fontaine today, a young woman who um, is, is uh, overcoming her addiction each and every day. She's been five years sober. Um, it took the loss of her brother to to uh, to allow her to to carry on and be strong and um, she works through him and with him each and every day by him, uh, by her side. And I think that he gives her the strength that she needs to, um, to become a successful photographer that she is. If you want any more information, uh, look up Jen Fontaine Photography. I'm Kathy Chenna. Thanks for watching Tri-Cities Community TV.